In this video, we're going to talk about how to use objects in C++. So what is an object? Objects are a tool for organizing our code that can group together both data and behavior so that when we need to, instead of just having a bunch of functions floating around and a bunch of variables floating around, we can group together multiple variables and multiple functions into a single cohesive object. So for an example object, let's say we're making our own game. We're gonna implement the Sims. And to do that, we need some object that represents a person. Now in this game, we're gonna keep track of a bunch of different variables about the specific person. We might know their age, how long they've been alive in our simulation, their hunger level, how much they want to eat, uh, their tiredness level, if they haven't slept in a while, and many more variables if we wanted to. Now we said one of the useful parts about objects is that they could group both data and behavior. So we're also going to have some functions that are baked in to this object. We might have an eat function or a sleep function. And these functions might affect the hunger and tiredness variables because they're part of the same object. Every entity inside of an object, whether it's a variable or a function, is called a member. So this first section here we have are member variables. These are the data associated with a given object. And we call the second section our member functions. Now, of course, when we're doing a game like The Sims, we're going to have multiple people alive in the simulation at one time. So we might have one person object here, whose age is 10, and their hunger, they just ate, so their hunger is zero, and they haven't slept in a while, so their tiredness is maxed out at 100%. And we might have another person, P2, and this person object is a little bit older, say 20. They're about mid-level hungry, so we'll do it 50%. And they just woke up, so we'll bump their tiredness down to 5%. Each of these individual objects is called an instance. And the blueprint that tells us how an object is laid out is known as that object's class. In C++, we use the class as the type of the object variables. And that's how we know which blueprints associate with which instances. We might have a line in our code that looks something like this. We're declaring a new variable here, so hopefully this syntax looks familiar to you from the first video. For our type, we're going to use the class of the object. Our identifier is just the name of this instance, and our initializer looks like this. This is a special initialization syntax for objects, and it's one of a couple that we'll discuss later on in the semester. For now, just know that this creates a new object for us. Now, once we have our object, B1, how do we actually access the members inside of it? And for that, we have the dot operator. So if we wanted to print out P1's hunger level, we just say P1.hunger and pass that to the C out stream. And if we want to call the sleep method on P1, we could say p1.sleep. The dot operator is how we access members of normal objects. You'll have the identifier for the object to the left of the dot and the member you want to access to the right of the dot. Like with any other code, our variables can just be referenced by their name. And for functions, we have to give it the name and the argument list. Now let's look at a very useful class from the standard library, stdstring. We're once again looking at our documentation, cppreference.com. And here we can see that std string is actually just another name for a std basic string of characters. And if we click through to the basic string documentation and scroll down a little bit, we'll see a very useful section called member functions. This section lists out all the functions that are available to us in a standard string object. Some of the useful ones we'll want to look at include the at function, the size function, and the insert function. So here's what it looks like to declare a new variable of type std string. We'll call it my string and we'll initialize it to the word robojackets. If we ask my string for its size, we'll get 11 because that's how many characters are in the word robojackets. We can use the at function to ask the string which character is at a specific position 
So in this case, if we say my string dot at four, we'll get the letter J. And we can use the insert function to add characters to the string. In this particular version of the insert function, we can give it the position at which we want to insert our characters, how many characters we want to insert, and the character to insert. So in this example, where we've asked my string to insert a hyphen character at position four and do it twice, we'll get this string as our output, robo hyphen hyphen jackets. And that's all we're going to cover for right now on how to use objects in C++. You'll learn how to create your own classes later on in the semester, but it's important for us to cover how to use these objects now, because when you show up for training, we're going to be playing with actual robots. And the way we control those robots is through an object. You might see code that looks like this in your in-class exercises. And it's important that you understand that all this first line is doing is declaring a new variable called robot, which is an instance of the RJ robot class. And this second line is just calling the stop motors function on that existing robot object. Being able to use objects like this is going to open up the door to a lot of more fun things we can do with C++.